OK. So previously, as I mentioned in parabolas, I said, guys, we have to know how to complete the square, right? It's going to be coming up. And we did some of those problems, Fish, that had you completing the square. Now, last night's homework, we stayed away from completing the square, took a little break, go through. But uh, I need to make sure you guys understand that you're aware of that we will have problems that are going to look just like this. And I'm going to ask you to find the center, the focus, the vertices, and so forth. So the only way to do that is when we have it in that format, in the standard format that we're used to, where we can identify the center, identify our A and our B. So what we need to do is we need to rewrite this in that format. All right? So to do that, we have to complete the square. But notice for an ellipse, we have an x squared and a y squared. So therefore, we're going to be completing the square twice. So the first thing I want to do, kind of like step number one, if you want to think about it, is group your x's and your y's. OK? So I'm grouping my x's and my y's. I'm just going to borrow this when I need it, please. Um, I'm going to group my x's and my y's just so I have everything combined together. And then I put my constant over on the other side. Now, what I need to do is I kind of put parentheses around there. Is I need to create a binomial squared out of my x's and my y terms, right? I need that x minus h squared, correct? So I need to rewrite this as a perfect square. So to do that, I need to complete the square. And if you remember the steps of completing the square, I cannot have a coefficient of anything else than 1. So I'm going to factor out a 4. So therefore, I have x squared, I like stuff too, x squared plus 4x plus over here, I can factor out a 25. Uh, let's do be, that would be 4, 5, 6. Does everybody see what I did? I just factored out that number. I did not factor out my variables. Because now I have a binomial right? that I want to create into a perfect square trinomial. So the step three, if you guys remember, you just take b divided by 2 and square. Well, what is b again? Remember, b is your coefficient of your linear term. That's my b. So here is my b. Here is my b. So what I do is I take 4 divided by 2 and square it. Negative 6 divided by 2 and squared it. Whew. All right. Now, but at least hopefully you guys see by taking my b divided by 2, I now have two perfect square trinomials, correct? But there's an issue. From this formula, or from this equation to this equation, I added two numbers. I added 4 and I added 9 to the left side, correct? Therefore, this equation is not the same as that equation. So to make this equation equal, I need to add a 4 to this side. But before I get over to adding the 9, I notice that, yes, I added a 4, but I added a 4 inside parentheses. And those parentheses allow it to be multiplied by a 4. So I need to multiply it by, or I need to add a 4 times 4. And the same thing works over here. I'm adding a 9. But that 9 is being multiplied by 25. OK? So now on the left side, the nice thing about having binomial squared is I can, or a, trinom a perfect square trinomial, is I can rewrite them as a binomial squared. So now this becomes 4 times x plus 2 squared plus 25 times y minus 3 squared equals. Uh, what is it? 100. 100? I'll just take your word for it. Thank you. OK. Now, we're almost at our equation, but we're not even at our equation yet. Because remember, our equation states that it's x minus h um, plus y minus k. a and b can be either over one of those two. And then that equals 1. So I got to get this. I got to get this stuff to equal 1. Plus, I want to know what my a and b are. So to do that, I divide by 100. on both sides. By doing that, remember the 100 divides into both of these, right? 100 divides into both of those terms. So therefore, 4 divided by 100 reduces down to 1 over 25. 
plus 25 over 100 reduces down to 1 fourth. So there's my equation. Now that I have it in that equation, now that I have it in this equation, do you guys think we can now find our focus, hypothesis, vertices, and so forth? Yeah, so let's just go through all the information. The center, that's the easiest one to do, right? HK, negative 2, 3. Um, but then the next thing we got a little, big, a little bit bigger picture, uh, picture which is Brittany. How do we determine if it has a horizontal major axis or a vertical major axis? Wherever the higher bottom number is. Okay. And that tells, so the higher bottom number is 25. And since it's under the x, that tells us what? Horizontal. It's a horizontal major axis. Very good. So therefore, is that going to be A or B? That's A. That's A. Perfect. So now, right, well, I'm sorry. That's A squared, sorry, is 25. Therefore, A equals 5. Right? And then A, do you remember what A represented? Correct. A represents the length from the center to a vertice. All right. And did it say sketch the graph? I can't remember. In your homework, did you guys have to sketch graphs? No, but for you guys did have to sketch the graph. Yes. So we're going to want to sketch the graph. Man, I'm running out of space. Let's do it right here. We don't need that space. All right. So I'm sketching the graph. First thing we're going to want to do is plot my uh, center, which is that negative 2, positive 3. Now, Brittany stated that since my a was larger and it's under the x, I'm going to have a horizontal major axis. All right. So that means my foci and my vertices are all going to lie on this horizontal line. So if I know my value of a is 5, to find my new vertices, all I'm going to do is go 5 to the right and 5 to the left, correct? Yes? So to find the vertices, all I can do mathematically is just do <coughs> negative 2 plus 5, comma 3, and negative 2 minus 5, comma 3. All right? The, the y coordinate of my center, or the y coordinate, is not going to change for the vertices at all because I'm just going left and right because it's a horizontal major axis. So therefore, my vertices are going to be um, 3, 3, and negative 7, 3. So let's go and plot those. Negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 1, 2, 3. So you guys see how they make that horizontal axis? The, when I'm grading a test, what I'm going to be looking for is that the y coordinate, if you have a horizontal major axis, I'm going to look for the y coordinate is all the same for all your answers. Because, Aaron, what is on the major axis? What else? And the foci. And the foci, right? So um, now, if we know a, is 25, a squared is 25, b squared is equal to 4, therefore b equals 2. Now, to find the vertices, or to find the foci, Josh, do you remember what we need to find the foci? What value? C, sweet chair, right, C. OK. Um, ba -la -la, C. So to do that, we need to look at our equation, which is C squared equals A squared minus B squared. Well, this is a nice problem. This is 25 minus 16. C squared equals 9, so therefore C equals 3. Huh? Oh, OK, I see what you're saying. I was looking up. So it's 4. Thank you. Dang, so it's not as nice. But that's OK. So c is squared of 21. So now, to find my foci, all I'm going to do is do the same thing. I'm going to add and subtract from my x coordinate. So it's going to be negative 2 plus the square root of 21, comma 3, and negative 2 minus the square root of 21, comma 3. Right? All we're doing is adding and subtracting from there. Does everybody see that, how that works? Anybody have any questions? So your foci is going to be whatever you know, negative 2 squared of 1. If you guys want to estimate it, you're probably going to be like out here. 
All right, I'm just going to estimate my answer. I'm not really too, so much concerned about it. The last thing is going with the co-vertices. The main, as long as I can see the points. The co-vertices, I remember, is your B, but they're on the perpendicular from your major axis. So if your major axis is horizontal, your, uh, your co-vertices are going to be vertical. So B is 2, so then I'll just go up 2 and down 2. And that's my lovely ellipse. Um, I think they did ask us for do this eccentricity. Eccentricity is going to be c over a, so it's the square root of 21 over a, which is 5. OK? And that's it. Wow. So <laughs> from.